On the flat plains of Texas, something colossal is taking shape. It's a project so vast, so expensive, it's approaching $50 billion. This isn't just another factory. It is one of the most complex industrial undertakings in American history. It's America's bet on reclaiming its dominance in the global chip race. On paper, this new facility is an engineering marvel designed to challenge the mega factories of its global rivals. But before a single chip has been made, it's a project already on the verge of collapse. The future of artificial intelligence and the stability of the entire global economy may depend on what happens inside these walls. To understand how we got here, you have to understand the company that built it and the moment it lost its grip on the world. A decade ago, Samsung seemed unstoppable. It remains the second largest chip maker on the planet, one of the few giants capable of competing with Taiwan's dominant TSMC. Their mastery over memory chips, powering everything from the world's data centers to your smartphone, is the stuff of legend. But memory was never the end game. Samsung also forged logic chips, the silicon brains inside the first Apple iPhones, Nvidia's powerful GPUs, and even Tesla's early autopilot computers. By the mid-2010s, Samsung had mastered the 14-nanometer process, a feat that won them Apple's business and put them shoulder to shoulder with TSMC. For a brief moment, it looked like they might just conquer the chip world. Then, the empire began to crack. As Samsung's smartphones became a direct rival to the iPhone, Apple grew cautious. Entrusting Samsung with the brain of its most important product was like asking an enemy to sharpen your sword. Apple walked, shifting its advanced chip production exclusively to TSMC, a neutral foundry that built chips for everyone but competed with no one. Think of a foundry as a world-class kitchen for hire. It doesn't run its own restaurant, it just cooks amazing food for anyone who brings them a recipe. The cracks deepen in from within. Unlike TSMC's singular focus, Samsung was a sprawling conglomerate, pulled between building chips, memory, displays, and smartphones. Their 10 nanometer process fell behind schedule. Then, reports of poor yields, the number of working chips per silicon wafer plagued their 7 nanometer and 5 nanometer generations. As yields faltered, so did confidence. NVIDIA left. Then Qualcomm. Each departure was another blow, draining billions from their foundry business. That's when Samsung made a bet so audacious no one saw it coming. It decided to rebuild its foundry empire, not in Korea, but on the other side of the planet. In 2021, the company announced a $17 billion factory in the heart of Texas, a facility so ambitious it was poised to become the most advanced semiconductor plant on U.S. soil. The mission was clear, prove to the world and to itself that cutting-edge chip-making could have an American future. Samsung chose Taylor, a quiet town near Austin, as the site for its comeback. The location was strategic, placing it near customers like Tesla and a booming tech hub, hungry for AI hardware. The land itself was ideal, vast, flat, and geologically stable, a world away from the earthquake risks of other chip-making regions. The initial plan was straightforward. Break ground in 2021, begin mass-producing proven four nanometer chips by late 2024, and use that foundation to push toward the next generation two nanometer node. The Taylor factory was set to make history, but this is where the grand vision collided with a brutal new reality. Whatever could go wrong, did. Building a chip fab is a high stakes choreography. 
Before a single yard of concrete is poured, you must lock in two things. The node, which is the generation of chip you'll make, and the anchor customer, whose massive orders will calibrate your entire production line. Samsung had planned for the 4 nanometer node, a mature, reliable process, but as construction began, the AI revolution exploded. Suddenly, 4 nanometer chips were old news. Every major designer wanted the bleeding edge. 3 nanometer chips and beyond. Faced with building a brand new factory with no customers, Samsung made a fateful call. It would pivot. The Taylor Fab would skip 4 nanometers and leapfrog directly to the unproven, high risk 2 nanometer node. It was a bold, desperate move. In reality, it was catastrophic. It was like starting to build a factory for gasoline cars, only to decide halfway through to make flying cars instead. The entire blueprint becomes worthless. That single decision plunge the project into chaos. It demanded entirely new tools, new chemical recipes, and a painful learning curve for a technology Samsung was still struggling to master in its own labs. The budget spiraled out of control. The original $17 billion plan swelled toward an astonishing $50 billion. The production start date, once set for 2024, slipped to 2026, a two-year delay that feels like an eternity in the chip industry. And all this before the foundation was even complete. Before building the factory, Samsung first had to conquer the ground it stood on. The soil in Taylor, Texas, is a type of expansive clay, rock hard when dry, but it swells and shrinks with moisture. For a normal building, it's a nuisance. For a semiconductor fab, where you're trying to print transistors smaller than a virus, it's like trying to perform brain surgery on a trampoline. Absolute stillness is everything. Inside the multi-billion dollar lithography machines, a passing train miles away, can create vibrations that misalign the lasers and ruin millions of dollars worth of chips in an instant. So Samsung went to war with the Earth. Engineers devised one of the most extreme foundation systems ever built. They drilled over 20,000 deep shafts, driving them nearly 110 feet down into stable bedrock far below the shifting clay. These piers act like the legs of an offshore oil rig, anchoring the factory floor to solid Earth and creating a massive, immovable platform completely isolated from the ground around it. It is a building within a building, engineered for absolute stillness. With the ground tamed, the battle moved upward. Now behind schedule, Samsung adopted precast construction. Thousands of massive concrete columns, beams, and slabs were built off-site, then trucked in and snapped together like a giant industrial Lego set, saving precious months. But a silent, stable factory needs power. Immense, uninterrupted power, a modern fab, consumes as much electricity as a small city, and a flicker lasting a millisecond can mean millions in losses. Yet, Samsung was plugging into ERCOT, one of America's most notoriously unreliable power grids. To solve this, Samsung built its own safety net, a private power grid inside the grid, with redundant lines and massive backup systems. It's like having a personal water tower connected to your house, ensuring that even if the city's water gets cut off, your faucet never runs dry. All of this monumental engineering serves one purpose, to build the tiniest, most complex devices on Earth. The leap to the two nanometer node is so difficult because it requires reinventing the transistor itself. For years, chips have used FinFET transistors. Imagine a light switch with a gate controlling the electricity 
only wraps around a silicon fin on three sides. At incredibly small scales, this switch starts to leak electrons. To regain control, engineers devised a new architecture, gate all around, or GAA. Instead of a fin, GAA uses horizontal nanosheets, ultra-thin ribbons of silicon stacked like pancakes. The gate now completely envelops these sheets on all four sides. It's the difference between pinching a garden hose from three sides and squeezing it perfectly with your entire hand. You get absolute leak-free control over the flow. But building GAA transistors is like performing surgery at the atomic level. Each sheet must be sculpted and aligned with near-perfect precision. And this reveals the true crisis in Taylor. A fab isn't just concrete and steel, it's people and process. Samsung flew in hundreds of its top engineers from Korea to train a new American workforce. But there was a fatal flaw. Nobody, not even in Korea, had ever mass-produced two nanometer chips before. They were trying to invent a revolutionary process in a new country with a new team, all at once. Meanwhile, in Arizona, rival TSMC took a completely different approach. TSMC perfects every new process in a dedicated mother fab in Taiwan. Only when the recipe is flawless do they copy it exactly. The tools, the layout, the workflow, and paste it into a new location. It's like a master chef perfecting a complex cake recipe, then franchising it so every new bakery produces an identical, perfect result. From day one, TSMC starts from a proven blueprint. Samsung in Texas was starting from scratch. You can copy the building, but you cannot simply copy the secret recipe of timings temperatures and chemical cocktails that makes it all work. That recipe is a national treasure. The Taylor Fab was a monument to ambition, a near-complete ghost factory of a waiting for a customer that might never come. It seemed the $50 billion gamble was destined to fail. Then, at the 11th hour, an unexpected savior emerged. Tesla. In a landmark deal, Tesla committed to having Samsung manufacture its next generation AI chips in Taylor. These chips will be the brains behind its full self-driving cars, Optimus humanoid robots, and Dojo AI supercomputers. For Tesla, the move was strategic. It secured a dedicated production line, free from competing with Apple or Nvidia for factory time. It also brought its supply chain home. Taylor is just a short drive from Tesla's Austin Gigafactory, allowing their engineers to work together in a way that's impossible across an ocean. For Samsung, it was more than a deal. It was a lifeline. It finally had the anchor customer it desperately needed, a high-volume, cutting-edge product that could justify turning on the machines and perfecting its troubled two-nanometer process. For the engineers in Taylor, it was a spark of redemption. The Tesla deal has breathed new life into the Texas project, transforming the narrative from a crisis of demand into a frantic race for execution. The production of Tesla's advanced chips is now scheduled to begin in 2026. But the nightmare of building this factory hasn't vanished. The immense challenge of perfecting a brand new manufacturing process with an inexperienced workforce remains. The Herculean task of cloning a multi-trillion dollar supply chain thousands of miles from home is far from over. If anything, the Tesla deal puts even more pressure on Samsung to deliver. The Taylor Fab struggles raise a tough question. Is this just the price of rebuilding chips in America, or proof that such complex global systems can't simply be copied no matter the cost?